Hello and welcome back to Conversations in the Community. I'm your host, Dania Parker-Smith with parkbench.com South London Wortley. I'm also a real estate agent here in London with Team Forrester and New Vista Premier Realty. Our guest today is Justin Ballinger. He is co-founder of Storm State Breweries in the Coves in Old South London. And Storm State Brewery has been around since 2017 after Justin was taking a, a bike tour around the country and he found this little nestled area of London and decided he wanted to make that his home. So we're going to find a little bit out a little bit more about Justin and Storm State Breweries today. So welcome, Justin. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. So, um, Justin, I'm sure that becoming somebody who works in, uh, crafting beer just doesn't happen overnight. It's not like you go to work at a store and just do it. How did that happen for you? Uh, so I went to school for chemistry. So I went to both University of Prince Edward Island, where I'm from, um, and then Memorial uh, Newfoundland. Um, and uh, throughout my time doing my my degree, um, I just loved home brewing. So I home brewed for about uh, 12 years. Um, after I graduated, I then worked in the petroleum industry for a little bit, then the pharmaceutical industry, and realized that those industries weren't necessarily for me. Uh, found some like-minded people that wanted to uh, get into the brewing world uh, so that I could apply the stuff that I learned in the chemistry lab bench, but also what I learned uh, in the uh, 12 years of home brewing before opening. Okay, so petroleum and pharmaceuticals to beer. That, that's quite yeah. the transition. <laughs> it, it, it definitely is, but uh, there are a lot of applicable, a lot of people call it an art. There is a lot of science to it as well. Okay, perfect. Uh, so what makes Storm State Brewery stand out from all the other microbreweries in London? Uh, one of the things that we have going for us is the fact that our system is so small. Um, it allows us to have a lot of experimental batches uh, while also maintaining uh, beers that are very easy to drink and very approachable, I find. Um, so we can have um, up to 17 beers on tap. Uh, sometimes we try to cram in a couple extra ones uh, by having cask beers or whatnot. But we'll always try to have easy drinking beers uh, like a lager or an Irish red. But we'll have very exper experimental beers, uh, such as uh, fruited sours and uh, big IPAs. Wow. Um, so I, that 17 beers, that's a lot of beers for a small brewery, isn't it? Because I, I mean, from my experience going into small breweries, they have like four or five, right? I think it depends on the brewery. We yeah. just love variety. Um, and even with specific some of our beers, we will... Uh, do tinctures of those beers. Uh, yeah. So for instance, if you'll order some of our Berlin or Weiss or Moon Shadow, uh, we will always have a syrup, which is a traditional German way of doing it. So there's four or five ways that you could drink that that day. Um, we also, uh, whenever we are allowed to open inside, we have <laughs> Sunday uh, beer cocktails as well. So we'll take our beer and mix it in a way that we think will allow you to try different flavors. Um, a lot of our beers, we take inspiration from desserts and from uh, juices and so we in cocktails as well and we try to incorporate that in a lot of our different ways so whether it be during the formulation of the beer itself uh, which is uh, so similar to our, our sour beers but sometimes like I was saying with our beer cocktails we'll take an IPA or something like that and then we'll do a beer mosa with it so 15 wow. beers is a lot, but it allows you to have a good variety if you're coming in yeah. and you yeah. don't know what you want to drink. It will give you a wide breadth of stuff to try. Right. So for me, I'm, uh, I have to be quite honest, I'm, I'm not a beer fan, but I was on your site and looking at all the different beers that you have. And I came across a couple that I really liked. Uh, liked. Is, is it Confluence? So Confluence is our sour IPA with fruit. Um, it's a very fun one because you do get like a little bit of bitterness from the hops you get, but you do get its aromatics. Um, and it's kind of, it adds like a little texture. The other one I saw was Say It With Flowers. So I think that that one really stood out to me as a woman and, um, coming up on Valentine's day, you know, those kind of things that are happening. So, uh, tell me a little bit about that beer. 
So Saint Louis Flowers is our specific uh, Valentine's Day beer. Uh, so it's a sour beer. Uh, we, we love making sour beers. We love drinking them. We love producing them. Uh, so Saint Louis Flowers is uh, a wheat beer that we've added salt to, uh, okay. as well as rose hips and hibiscus. So you're getting that nice floral character of it. Um, and then the beautiful ruby, uh, not ruby, I guess more of a rosé color to it. Okay, um, yeah. And it's, it's, yeah, it's delicious. Yeah, the, the salt and the salinity of it makes it very easy to drink. And so for somebody who's not very fond of beer, <laughs> um, this is something that people who struggle with the drinking beer might be um, apt to enjoy. So I think that uh, the good thing about having the 15 different beers available allows us to curate our beer to people. So if you're not a big beer drinker, we can find something for you. So for instance, if you're a wine drinker, we can find um, a beer that is more similar to a white wine or a red wine, depending on what you enjoy. So for instance, if you like, um, if you like a red wine, we'll yeah. find you a big Russian imperial stout or an oatmeal stout, which has a lot of the same characteristics of the wine, of the red wine. If you prefer white wine, then we have um, the state with flowers. We also have the moon shadow, which are sour beers that emulate a lot of the same characteristics of the, of the white wine. And if you're more of a cocktail person, we also have uh, beers that will emulate that as well. So we try to have a, and if you're more of a beer beer person, we also have uh, just a plain and simple lager or an Irish red. So we try to have beers that most people will want to go back for a second. Right. So Justin, I happen to, um, so my team of real estate agents, Team Forrester, <laughs> we actually have um, a lot of beer fans <laughs> in our group. So when we're back open, I would love to bring all my team over and have a taste testing session with you and, and maybe like film a little bit of a follow up with you to, to kind of prove to people that people like me can drink beer. <laughs> well, we'd love to have you. And Perfect. I think that, uh, that's, that's the great thing about our, our variety is that we can definitely find something for everybody. I'm looking and forward to beer that. Ends up, and if beer ends up not being something that uh, after you've tried a couple that you don't want to have, we do have ciders and we do have wines okay. on site as well Perfect. as an alternative. That's great. So you were traveling across Canada doing this big bike trip. You said it was like 8,000 miles or kilometers or something. And you out, came yeah. across your little area where you live. So what did you love about that that made it stand out? And is that the same thing that you love about it today? So when we first moved to London, we moved to London because my partner went to school at Western. Uh, and so that's what brought us from the East Coast to, okay. uh, to London. Uh, and we, we moved in, in a couple of different neighborhoods, but the one that we enjoyed the most was Old South, just because of the access that it has to her job, to my job. So it, originally it was due to accessibility, yes. but we've grown to really love it just because of our neighbors. Um, and I'm a huge fan of, of architecture. I love mm -hmm. the architecture in the area. Also the ease of access to get everything that we need uh, just grocery stores and uh, just everything else that you need is in this area. Uh, mm -hmm. Whereas, so we don't have to go too far or across the city. If... Right. And if you go out to eat, where do you go? Uh, there's a couple different spots that we do go more than we probably should. Um, <laughs> uh, we're a big fan of uh, Pizzeria Madre over on, uh, on Wellington street. Yeah. Um, I, I think that they have some of the best pizza in the city, definitely in the city. Um, I'm a, we're a big fan of uh, Pub Milos's downtown. Uh, they have a very good curated beer list. Okay. Um, and uh, the Morrissey has uh, over on uh, Dundas Street. Um, okay. It just has a great environment with uh, great food. So I'm looking forward to these restaurants being able to open again. So what would you say is the most popular beer with women? So... I, I would say the thing about our beer is that we do not have a demographic shift either way uh, oh. for, for our beers. Uh, we do have some uh, people coming in and say that I don't drink beer with 
this in it or with that in it. Right. Uh, but we try to make beer for flavor, for flavor's sake. Mm-hmm. Um, and we do see that a lot of our customers uh, enjoy that. Uh, that being said, I would say one of our most favorite, most favorite, one of our most popular beers is most likely our Shook series. Um, it's the what series? Sal- sorry, our our Shook series. S H O O K. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, it is a sour beer, uh, which most of the beers I've mentioned so far today have been. Uh, but it's we put a ridiculous amount of fruit in it. Uh, we add um, lactose sugar, which is a sugar that the yeast can't uh, eat. So it has a residual su- uh, sweetness to it. So it's got mm-hmm. the nice tanginess. It's got the sweetness. It's got the fruit. And then uh, it, it's just, it's it's juice in a glass. It's a cocktail in a glass. It's, you, it's a beer that a lot of people... <laughs> And, all, and it usually has a lot of red or ruby colors to it, uh, yeah. which is very eye-catching. Uh, so whenever we do have one available, uh, you'll often see it on the tables around. When I was on this site and I was looking at all the different beers that you have, it's so nicely laid out and you have the, the can that's there and then you have it nicely displayed where you can actually see the color of the beverage in the glass, which is, I think for women, very appealing. I think we choose more on looks than we do on, on other things. Right. So for women, and and that's where I'm coming from is, uh, you know, I think that we choose based on looks and I would choose based on some of those. I think the ones I chose were the, the more colorful, fruitier looking ones. Right. I, I completely agree in the sense that, uh, every that the first thing that we want to see is something that's delicious to our eyes yeah and for instance for me the first thing I want to see is a beautiful Irish red that is a, a, a beautiful like uh, ruby hued uh, that's clear and it has a nice uh, frothy head on it that is one of my favorite beers we have on on site um, and it's nice and crisp, but it also has a nice little sweetness to it. Um, and I agree with you in the sense that the first thing that sells you on that beer is the color of it and the appearance of it. I definitely agree with that. Perfect. So where can people buy your, your beer and your beverages? So currently all of our beer are available on site. Uh, so we're at 169 Warncliffe Road. So just in the same plaza as Piero's Pizza. Okay. Um, yeah. um, or if so beer and pizza. Topic, <laughs> beer exactly, and pizza. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, so all, all of our beer is, is there. Uh, so if you're uh, so if you're in London, that's where everything is. Um, but if you're outside of London, we tend to have we with the new law changes. Uh, we've had our stuff at a couple of different bottle shops in Kitchener and Waterloo, as well as St. Catharines. Nice. So I saw you can also, or can you order online, right? And is that just yeah. for pickup or is that, um, is so, there a delivery? What is that? So for ordering online, uh, it is for pickup. So if you want to do curbside, we can bring it out to your car. Um, it also, currently we're doing uh, Tuesdays and Saturdays for delivery. Um, it's free deliveries uh, for that, uh, over $50, I believe. Um, but yeah, we'll, we deliver that, uh, around noon on Tuesdays and, uh, Friday, not Saturdays on Tuesdays and Fridays. Okay. Uh, and we also do, uh, in, uh, within Ontario shipping, uh, through the website as well. So we're, we'll be looking forward to coming and having, a. a what, what days are, can we come to, to when you're back open? Is it Sundays? Did you say when, when we're able to come back and be on site? In the past, we have been open from Wednesday through Sunday. Okay. Perfect. Well, so I'm, um, looking, I'm looking forward to having the patio open again. Um, and uh, we're look, uh, everything will be uh, socially distanced so that people will be safe. That's one of our biggest priorities here is to make sure that everybody feels safe and comfortable. Yeah, exactly. So we'll be, yeah. 
Well, Justin, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to talk with us and to share a little bit more about Storm State Breweries with us. So um, I look forward, like I said, to joining you on site and trying some of your beers. And thank you so much for joining us today. Once again, I'm Dania Parker-Smith with parkbench.com, South London Wortley, also a real estate agent here in London with New Vista Premier Realty, changing families one home at a time. And if you don't want to miss any of these community conversations, please just go on our site and sign up for our newsletter because you will get notifications of all of these um, interviews once a week when our newsletter comes out. So thanks again and stay tuned again next time when we come back with conversations in the community.